recording. Okay, uh, let's see. It is uh, six. Uh, it's five fifty-seven on uh, the uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and we're not going to be here very long tonight. Uh, this is. Uh, let's see. It is uh, uh, November twenty-first, twenty eighteen. This is six o'clock. This is the normally scheduled meeting of ITSC twenty-three oh nine with a couple of people here. Um, and it's a, let's see, it's a uh, Wednesday evening just before Thanksgiving. So like I say, we're not going to spend real long time to hide this. Uh, I sent you a uh, file. All right. I sent you a Word document, actually. And I described the logic by which I was able to get the um, statistics working. Now, our objective was that we wanted to get um, the idea of the number of games, for example, two players in this scenario right here have seven games. 22 players have six games. 83 players have five games. 390 players have four games and so on down um, until we get down to zero games. There are 5,762 players that have zero games. I gave you some code that, at least with my, uh, in, in my schema, uh, populated well, uh, or it populated. So it generated about oh, 27,000 lines of code. It generated, uh, what, 17,000 players and a whole bunch of games, 10,000 games and 10,000 or so rounds. How did that work out? That's not a rhetorical question. Uh, let's see if we can, how can we do here? Um, Mr. Wallace, uh, I don't see that you have a microphone available. Uh, would you, if you would like to, you may send a text. Uh, um, uh, Chen, do you have any comments? How did that, um, uh, population work out for you? Uh, I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. Let me download it. Have you sent it all yet? I uh, did. It was um, it was attached to last week's um, lesson, actually. Okay, I'll take so a look at it. It was at an announcement from last week. Yeah. Sure. Um, basically, it uh, it it looks like this, and and you should get this running. Let me pull it up here. Um, uh, so we're going to generate a bunch of random rows. Uh, so let's see. This stuff is just fluff here where I'm working with some stuff. But basically, uh, it starts out, uh, calls the init routine. And it wipes everything out. So RPS init. Uh, I believe you have that. If you don't, you should. Uh, it just uh, wipes wipes all your data, wipes everything out. Then I declare, I set a start value, and you may use this code. I set a start value at 65. 65 is capital A. And I set stop as uh, 91. 91 is capital Z. And then I declare i, j, and k as some integers and a few other things that we'll work with there. Error level is just a dummy integer that um, I have to have to call uh, insert. And so here I'm going to basically I have here a nested for loop. Um, nothing really unusual about it. So this looks like a for um, K gets a start, K less than stop value, 
K plus plus, et cetera. Well, K plus plus happens down here, but whatever, it's, a, it's just a for loop, uh, begin, and then this one sets J to start while J is less than stop, and it's gonna go J plus plus, and this one sets I start. And basically we build a um, three character string, of I, J, K. So it's going to be A, 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 B, A, A, C. Um, and then we insert that, insert player. So we're going to generate every possible player that we can generate that has three letters, three capital letters in that player's name. Now, if you want to generate that, um, however you generate it, uh, basically, I, that's all I really need. I insert the player. I just set the player's name to X. The player's password is X. Error level is a dummy value that I completely ignore. Uh, so I just insert a whole bunch of players. There's the line that does that. Questions? It should work for yours. Um, if yours is named RPS insert player, now if yours isn't named that, um, you're gonna have to tweak something. I would suggest you tweak this code instead of your stuff. So if uh, insert player is, works for you, then use it. If yours is different, then make this match what you have. So he, mine, he takes a player, username the player's name all it needs to be is non-null so x is fine um all of the players are going to have the same name the same physical name so john doe joe blow etc s is their player question hello mary hi uh so we're talking about uh getting this thing up and running so this first piece of it generates, uh, oh, well, I, I know exactly how many, uh, 26 to the third power, or 17,576 players, starting with AAA and ending with ZZZ. Any questions? Okay, let's see. Uh, Mary, uh, if you're not, don't have anything uh, right off and just say, would you mute your microphone, please? I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, I think it's up at the top someplace. I can mute it. Okay, if you could. Sure. One little click there and... Uh, uh, once you find that, uh, you can click it and then I can unmute you on this end and then you'll be able to turn yourself on and off. Um, let's see. Are there any questions on this piece of it? This is just three nested for loops. I don't have a for loop in TSQL, so I have to build one, which is kind of a pain in the petunias. But when I have to do it, I have to do it. And so is this one, the first one says for K gets start to stop, for J gets start to stop, for I gets start to stop, uh, generate uh, a character set based on that. So we'd start with A, 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 B, A, A, C. And then we simply insert that guy and increment. So I have a whole bunch of, uh, well, actually the nice thing about it is any three character where there are three capital letters will be a valid player. Doesn't matter what it is, it's gonna be a valid player because I put them all in there, exhausted it, which is what I was trying to do. I didn't wanna ask if it was valid, it is. So if, if it's got any three capital letters you can name is a valid player's name. Of 
questions. Mary, I'm going to unmute you. Did you find your mute button? Yes, I did. Yes, I okay. did. Okay, that's a handy thing to have. Hello, Donna. Um, Mr. Smith, I have a question. And who's this? This is Okechi. Okay. Um, you said that uh, we can use uh, part of your code. Would you like for us to use um, this part of your code to uh, generate uh, the players? You may use any part that you wish. Um, uh, you should generate players and games, certainly. Uh, the rounds really don't figure into this uh, assignment at all. The rounds aren't used at all, period. They're just kind of fluff. Um, you should generate players and games. Okay. Now, how you do that is uh, up to you. You may use my code, you may tweak my code, you may change my code as you need for yours to work. Uh, if you generate, uh, I would generate three letter names and generate all of them. So that's 17,500 some odd players that you'll have. So the point of uh, this portion of the code, the for loop, and the execution is to create players, but the goal of the assignment is to collect statistics, right? Correct. So the statistics portion is the portion that I'll be writing myself, but uh, the player, the actual player generation is uh, what I can use right here, right? Right. Uh, the the generation is just to give us something to have to to go collect to go look at the statistics. So okay. if 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 you have to type it in, that's just going to be a pain in the neck. So it's a whole lot yep. easier if it just <laughs> runs a loop. Um, we don't want to have to type in a bunch of, but it'd be all the same. It'd be the same if you did. Okay. I'm going to generate something like ten thousand games here. Um, it's not always exact because I'm going to have some collisions. Um, for example, I'm going to try to generate a duplicate game sooner or later. I'll have two players that are already in a game. In that case, my create game procedure is just going to reject it. No problem. I don't know how many games I'm going to have. Uh, so here I start and I, I generate a random number between 9,975 9, and uh, 10,026, I believe, because I believe this is gonna be zero through 49. Um, anyway, I generate some number. I don't know how many I'm gonna have. I don't wanna have exactly 10,000 because I don't want to know how many I'm gonna have. And basically, I just set this upper bound as something around 10,000. Um, it might be it might be 9,975. It might be as low as that. It might be as high as 10,025. I'm generating a random number uh, between one, between zero and 50, not including 50. So from zero through 49 and I add that to this. So I think if you look at this at the the way that the random number uh, take a random number multi uh, so the random gives me a, a a decimal number between 0 and 1 multiply it by 50 cast it to an integer uh, and this is a very common thing you see this used in C and everything else. Um, you guys see my screen okay? I believe I, yes, I have it shared. Um, well, I, uh, here's, here's my basic uh, for loop. Generate two random player IDs. So basically here I just, uh, I generate a character from A through Z. Generate another character A through Z, another character A through Z, that's player one. Generate another three character random player. 
insert the game. Now, I might get a duplicate game. I don't care. I'm just, I'm going for volume here. I don't really care how many I get. And then I generate a bunch of rounds. Actually, if you just cut this out completely, it doesn't have to be in there at all. Um, if you cut this out, your uh, statistics would run just fine. You don't need the rounds at all. Um, eh, go ahead and generate them if you're not doing anything. Let, the, uh, let your uh, database do some work. And so when I finish this, I have um, about, let's see, 17, 27, 20, 17,000 uh, gay, uh, users, about 10,000 rounds and about 10, uh, excuse me, about 10,000 games and about 10,000 rounds. So I've got about 37,000 uh, rows in here. So that gives me something to play with. And I'm going to start seeing a nice <clears throat> uh, distribution. Let's look at some statistics. Um, I have uh, 17,576. How many games do I have? Well, if I select count from how many games, it tells me I have uh, 10,003 games in this particular one. If I ran this code again, I, I'd get a different number. Um, what is this? Uh, this, this is later. Okay. How many rounds do I have? I don't really care how many rounds I have, uh, because that's not what I'm asking in the final one. But if I wanted to see it, I could see it. I have uh, 10,004 rounds. Okay. Big deal. I don't care. Now I'll give a breakdown of the number of games by number of players. What are the cumulative totals grouped by count of players? Okay, now this one, let's go look at what, uh, what I'm gonna see here. When I select this guy, this is what we want to see. So this is our final product here. I wanna see how many players have zero games. Uh, 5,672. Now I go to my normal distribution because these guys, the players with zero games are going to be decreasing. So here's where we begin our normal distribution. How many players have one game? 6,350. How many have two games? How many have three games? Four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, if you wish. Now I'm calling those buckets. I need a name for them. I need to talk about them. So I need to be able to say this four, how many players have four games? I want to be able to talk about that. And I'm gonna call that the fourth bucket. Questions. I'm making that up. Actually, it comes from um, hashing. And when you, um, I don't know, this isn't a lecture on hashing. Uh, I do those. But uh, uh, when we, sometimes we, we divide your social security number by 27 and take the remainder, I'm going to get a number from 0 through 26. And so I say your social security number hashes to the third bucket. And that's where I will find your record. Um, it's kind of like this, I guess. I'm going to say that uh, the people, the, the number of games, a person with four games is in the fourth bucket. A person with five games is in the fifth bucket. Is that okay? You can call it anything you want. I just need something to talk about it. Anyway, this is what I would expect to see from the code that I ran this time. If I ran the code again, I'm going to get different games. I might get eight buckets. I might get nine. I might get six. I don't know. It's going to change. Uh, I'm going to expect to see this kind of a distribution. Questions?
Now let's go look at the at how I got that. How do I? Uh, where do I get these? Okay, um, and I believe I gave you that. Create view. RPS statistics view. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. What do I do here? Um, okay. The outer query says I need the number of games and the count of the rows as the number of players. So I have a number of games, number of players. From what? Notice I have a derived table here. Okay. My subselect is in the from line. Select the PID and the count from um, and, and C and T, not the count. That's C and T. That's that's a, a name, not the count. Down here, it's the count. Select PID. So this one just has. Um, So PID comes here, it comes straight down, and count is, is really the count. And this guy says select the PID as PID, uh, P1 ID, P2 ID. So in other words, I'm counting them both. I want to know, uh, group them. So we group by the PID. How many games do I have for that player in RPS games, whether that player is player one or player two? Questions, now's the time to ask. It's awful quiet out there. Dr. Smith, this uh, part of the view, uh, these are. this is how you're generating the statistics, right? This is what's in the results window? Yes, I'm generating the statistics now with a view. Now, the view is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, <clears throat> the view is accurate. Uh, and I gave you the code. The, you have this code. So, uh, <clears throat> and the, the, the task is to generate this now we're going to materialize this as a table sometimes i i i've sometimes i lie a lot you know i do um we say things that aren't always always true and i said you never ever <clears throat> store a value that you can calculate? Well, sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. And when you would do that would be when you were using that a lot. Um, and so every time you turn around, you're using these statistics if you look at the cost of this view, if you do a show plan on this view, it's going to be very expensive. It's going to take about 1.75 seconds to run, which it might not, you know, it's not a, if that were the rest of your life, you wouldn't invest a whole lot, but um, that's a long time for a database. And if I'm running it hundreds of times a second, uh, golly, that's going to bog down. So the question is, can I speed it up? And the answer is, yes, I can if I materialize it as a table. Um, the example I gave, and I'll go to that, of what, uh, what if we wanted to keep the invoice line items as... Invoice line items, meaning uh, the sum of it, the invoice line items are there, and we wanted to keep the invoice total as an as a money value in the invoices. Now, normally I wouldn't do that. Normally I would write invoices as a view, 
And invoices, every time you selected something from invoices, what it would do would be to go out and sum all of the, the values in the invoice line items. But sometimes it's better to keep them as a number. And money's a number. Am I making any sense? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is a view. So this one counts everybody. Um, counts everybody who's in RPS games. But you know, I got some of them that aren't in RPS games. I've got some players who are in RPS players, but they're not in RPS games. What's their, what's their number? Is their number zero? Because they don't have any games. So this is simply a um, subselect union. So I say, count all the guys you have games for, and go count all the guys you don't have games for. Now those guys are zero. Then put them all together, Group them by count. And this is what you get. There are seven players. No, excuse me. Two players have seven games. 390 players have four games, and so on. And if you were to run, I think I ran a show plan on that. And I came up with a number that uh, <clears throat> represented the approximate cost on this computer for that. And I think it was, oh, something pushing two seconds. So that, that's, a, that's a long running query, particularly when you have uh, uh, 37,000 uh, rows. Well, you, okay, you don't have 37,000 rows because you don't have to count the, the rounds. The rounds don't figure into this. It's just simply players and uh, games. But uh, um, I don't have any joining to do. So it's just, it's just really a big table scan is all it is. Not even particularly big. Um, now 10,000 isn't many for a database. Starting to push the limit though for um, SQL ex uh, Server Express. There's a limit to how many rows you can have. Um, and I think we're pushing that limit. If I tried to go many more, I think I would bump into the limit of how big I can get in SQL Server. Oh, any questions on this? If you run this, um, and you should get it running. And so I turn on the uh, show plan. And execute, and let's see what we have here. Dr. Smith, what is show plan? Show plan, uh, let's see, that was a discussion we had, what, uh, two weeks ago, I believe. Um, there's a lecture on it there, and a, uh, uh, a short lecture from another professor is part of that. And... Uh, it talks about the show plan being it'll tell it gives you some uh, statistics on how this thing will be executed for example i can read down through here and i can see exactly what it's going to do um uh and so these are the steps it's going to take and i can look over here and the total cost of this execution of this thing, total subtree cost, the very top one, uh, usually it's the top two will be the same, tells me how many seconds it will take to execute this. So it is 1.4 to about a second and a half if I round uh, generously there. Um, set one and seven to, I'm, I'm gonna call it a second and a half because that's, to the nearest half second. And it, so it's pretty close to, to that, to the nearest 10 thousandths, to the nearest hundredth of a second, it's a second and a half uh, that it's gonna take to execute this. So every time I select something, every time I look at this view, 
it's going to cost me that uh, second and a half. Thank you for explaining. I, I missed a course, and this must be the one I missed. Okay, uh, yeah, go back and um, check that. I believe it was two weeks ago. Uh, Mary, do you remember when that was, when we talked about show plan? Was that two weeks ago tonight? That sounds about right, yes. I believe it was two weeks ago tonight. So um, uh, go check the uh, lecture from November 7th. And there is a, uh, not only do you get my lecture, but you get a uh, little uh, short oh, 12, 15 minute lecture by somebody else that does a very good job, in my opinion, talking about show plan. Uh, basically, you can turn it on. This gives me something I can drop into uh, uh, Excel. And then there's also the um, a, a graphical view you can get of it. I like this one because it gives me a nice, clean little number right there, the total subtree cost. The top of that is the one I'm really interested in. Um, now that gives it that's the number of how much I can, if I dig down into it more deeply I can see where the big cost is um but this and I can, and I can try to optimize it but basically this view is is going to cost me one and a half seconds Let's see if I dig down there we go um so uh, selecting from this view a second and a half every time I try, every time I hit it. And the question is, can we do better? And your job is to do better. And so your job is to, instead of having a view, now you can have the view, have the view because the view's handy. It will tell you if you're, the, uh, if, if I execute from this view, Let's see, set show plan off, turn it off, I don't wanna see it anymore. Um, when I select from the view, I see, now if I were to run this, these statistics again, I'm gonna see a different set here. They won't be the same numbers anymore because I'm gonna generate a new 37,000 rows, but that's fine. If they're gonna look kinda of like this nice evenly spaced okay and i told you instead of a view i wanted you to create a table rps statistics um not rps statistics view and i wanted you to maintain that table every time you inserted and deleted from the table uh, such that at the end of the day, you have the same values in both of them. And I sent you this um, close this down, I'll go away. Um, this uh, Word document. This logic worked for me. You have another idea, go ahead. I highly recommend that you get the auto insert. If you don't like mine, you're free to write your own. Hey, it's just a nested for loop. You can write that. And second is that the view that I just gave you, <clears throat> and you have that code, uh, and you have it here. I'll, I, 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 uh, let's see, it comes from, if you look at last week's uh, uh, files that I sent out as uh, um, in the announcement, uh, it's there. So you can, you have the code that creates that view. Get that running. Uh, that gives you a place to work from. Now, 
this is what worked for me. This is how I approached it. Um, I, I, this is a suggested approach. This is, this is what worked for me. There are other ways to do this. Um, you could count them all every time, but the first thing I did was I created a table. I created an RPS statistics table. Now I told you to create the RPS. I wanted to see RPS statistics. We have RPS statistics view. I want a table. So create the table. Create table, RPS statistics. What's it got in it? Two integers. I named mine num games and num players. You name yours as you please. The primary key is num games. Um, in the init routine, remember the init routine wipes everything out. Right? I wipe everything out and I insert one row into that table in the init routine. I'm allowed to do that. <clears throat> um, it's my table. This is not a publicly accessible table. So you don't have to worry about public user. You don't have to worry about granting anything. You don't have to worry about creating a, uh, a form that reads this table or inserts into this table, right? I, I mean, you could if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, that's not part of the game. So I'm gonna insert my zero row into that table. I insert into that zero, zero. What's that? Zero players have zero games. Sounds like an empty set to me, right? Pausing for comments. So Dr. Smith, I, I think I've got a couple of questions. One is I'm a little unclear. Um, are, is, is the assignment to, uh, for, first of all, I think you mentioned inserting and deleting, and I, I thought we were just worrying about inserting. I don't believe I ever said deleting. Did I ever say deleting? I thought you did just a minute ago. Um, uh, okay, so all we have to worry about is inserting. Mean? Okay, so we're just inserting players. Right. I think that if you look at it, though, you could see how you would delete players but uh right now the only thing we're going to worry about we're, we're just going to concern ourselves with insert um <clears throat> our delete routines are we we have triggered delete just to just to throw an error and say no you can't delete right right so when you were talking about that 1.75 seconds cost yeah. mm -hmm. was that per insertion no, that was per access to the view. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to uh, look at this view, this guy right here. So if I, uh, I'm sitting here and um, I say, I want to see that view. So I say, select everything from RPS statistics view. And I say, execute. And it executed. I just paid that 1.7, that 1.5 second cost. You know, when I, when I got the code working to insert all those records, that was a very, very lengthy query. Is that to be expected? Um, about, uh, mine ran between five and seven seconds. My mind ran considerably longer than that. I wondered if it was because instead of inserting player IDs, I'm having, you know, my player IDs are being generated by a sequence and I'm actually inserting names instead. Uh, it's possible, like uh, what's the difference in the terms of time? Mine were over, over a minute. Uh, that's unusually long. I would not expect that, uh, but uh, I could see how it might be. I'm not too worried about it. Are you getting, uh, are your data looking good? The, the data is looking fine. It's just, and then I even put an index on player name. Mm -hmm. thinking uh, that, that, the, that might help. Uh, yeah, uh, the index is going to hurt you in terms of inserting. 
Um, it, okay. it just, well, it slows you down. Okay. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how long. If you're getting the data in there, I can understand because you're using a sequence to generate the primary key. Right. And then inserting the names as, um, do you have a unique index on name? No. Uh, that's probably why you're having to search the whole database to make sure it's unique. Um, okay. I'll take a look at that. I, it really shouldn't take a minute. It wouldn't surprise me though. It, it, was, it, it was over a minute and I thought some of it might be that I was working off of my jump drive. But, um, it, might, it might be that too. Uh, we, can, we can test. Okay. See, I'll take a look at it. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, it takes mine about five seconds Okay. on and this I, computer. I guess, okay, so, and then my other question <clears throat> was concerning like the assignment itself. Mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're doing an insertion, are we doing this block insertion or are we just doing no, one, you're just one using, record? No, you're just using uh, the insertion is uh i'm just i'm using the uh plain old insertion in fact i'm making sure that i'm using the uh our ex execute rps insert game um player one player two and the error level error yeah. level is just dummy and I use up here, I use the um, execute RPS insert player. So I'm using the um, uh, procedures. Right. So the intent of what we just went through it was to sort of pre populate the players. Yeah, it's, it's just that's game. the whole intention is populate. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. Uh, I'm just interested in getting a bunch of data in there. Right. So that the statistics are kind of meaningful. Okay. Right. Great. Right. So right. Give, me, give me something to look at. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go back to this guy. I create my table, RPS statistics. It simply has two integers, num games, num players. And that routine puts a zero, zero. That's Essentially null, it just gives me a, I have a zero bucket with zero players in it and no players above that. Zero players, zero games and nobody else. Okay, so I create this guy, initialize it. Now, I add a int field, an integer field to RPS players. I default that field to zero. Now, if I default it to zero, that means it doesn't impact any of your procedures. He's not, he, it, it doesn't matter whether you require him or not. Check that he's not null, doesn't matter. He's going to default to zero. That's important, he defaults to zero. I name mine P game CNT, player game count. This will be the count of the games of every player. So player AAA has how many games? Well, when I initially insert him, he has zero plays. He has zero games. Okay, so I add this field to each player. There are other ways to do this. This is the way I chose. This way worked. So I have a, my RPS statistics table, has two integers in it, starts off at zero, zero. I add the uh, P game count, default it to zero. If I ran my code right now, I would have 17,000 players. They would all be set to zero. It wouldn't matter how many games they had because nothing is ever changing this. It's about to change. Step three. In the insert trigger of RPS players, in the insert trigger of RPS players, after I have checked them all, right? After everything is, after I've checked them, and when I, uh, when I insert the player, 
after I have actually inserted the player. Now I check the player, if the player is bad, I reject the player, that has nothing to do with this. After I have inserted the player, increment the number of players in RPS statistics where the number of games is equal to zero. Does that make sense? Do we just put that in the like begin and after insert, right? Well, after I insert a player, I got a new player. Let's say that player is A, B, C. So that, that player's name is A, B, C. How many games does that player have? Zero. So what happens over there in the, the RPS statistics table? The number of players I have with zero games has just incremented by one. That's because he hasn't joined the game yet, right? You've just inserted uh, him as a player. And for any player you insert, that will be true. So if you insert a player, you have just gotten one more player into the zero games bucket. So logically, to do that, I would have to create a new parameter increment it by one and then set the parameter to that value and then store it in the table or something like that? No, sir, you're making it too, uh, too complicated. Um, <clears throat> you're, uh, I, I want you to go over to the RPS statistics table. So it looks something like this. Uh, So here, here is the, here is the um, insert trigger. Uh, so you're going to begin your try. You insert into the players, right? That's where you insert into players. And then you're gonna update statistics. What do I mean by update statistics? I mean, update. Update what? Uh, RPS statistics. Did I spell that right? Set uh, num players equal to plus one where equals what? Zero. That's the code. So you're talking about parameters and stuff like that, but it's really easier than that. It's really easier than that. You're just, you're just setting the number of players to the number of players plus one in the zero bucket. So you've added a new player. Does the player have any games? No. How does uh, this update uh, statement connect to the new field uh, that we are creating in RPS players? Uh, RPS players has a new field. It comes in as zero. This statement has really nothing to do with that. Now it's going to, it, it will in a minute when you uh, create a new game, but when you create the player, how many games does the player have when you create it? Remember that field defaults to zero. Right. So you create it. How many games does that player have? Uh, zero. Thank you. Uh, so which bucket in the uh, statistics table does that player go into? The zero, uh, zero. bucket. Increment that count. 
Life is simple. Oh. Uh-huh. So, so um, okay. Uh, is this update statement the incrementer that you're talking about? Yes, this uh, update is an increment, and you can see it right here. Uh, it is an increment where it says set num players gets num players plus one. That is an increment. Um, so um, that that uh, uh, assignment increments it. Um, in the where condition. Um, that uh, value zero. Yep. Will that uh, value be a static value or? Yes. Will it, okay. Yes, because that's the bucket that a new player always goes into that bucket. You know, it took. Um, I, I had. Yeah, I had got that. It, moment. Got it. Got it. I had that moment too. I was like, wait a minute. I was trying to. Say, <laughs> no, how do I, a player can't come in with five games. A player right. has to come in with zero games. Okay. Therefore, I know which bucket to put them in. Okay. Okay. So the insert trigger is simple. Okay. All right. And this update, one more thing. This update statement will be a part of the insert trigger. Is that correct? It will be. Um, okay. Remember the uh, let's see, stat, update stats. Um, the insert trigger starts, and so the insert trigger goes through its thing, and it checks, and it says, uh, you know, um, the, the, is the name zero, is the name null, and is the password null, and all that stuff. So all of the tests happen up here, up above it. Now you get down, and you're ready to do the insert. Okay. So in your code, you have a try catch. Try, insert the row. Okay, so we're going to begin a transaction in, uh, outside of that try. So we begin the transaction. Lock row zero in RPS statistics. You can take a, a, a UPD lock on it, update lock. I can let other people read it. I think all of these will be update locks. That's the only row I really need to lock. Insert him into the players. Update the statistics. All of this has to happen. If anything fails, roll back. And try. Commit. So the catch block... And the catch block can throw an error, too, if you want to. But it's basically <clears throat> what it does is roll back. Uh, throwing an error also rolls back in, S in SQL Server. So having them both is maybe redundant, but that's OK. You can have them both. So if something happens and you've done the insert, but you can't update the statistics, the insert fails also. That's the idea of the transaction. So Dr. Smith, I was thinking about using, instead of uh, an insert before, using another trigger that would be insert after. After insert trigger? <clears throat> um, it could be done that way. Um, in other words, update the... Uh, update the statistics after the insert had happened. Right. Um, there are some issues with that. Uh, what happens if the uh, uh, update fails? Can you roll back the insert? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. You like having them both happen in the same trigger. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Have we taken care of the insert trigger? Because the update trigger gets a little bit trickier. Okay. Listen up, guys. Run the code after each step. Everything should work. Um, a good checkpoint. 
when you say select everything from RPS statistics, you should see you have uh, 17,576 players with zero games. I mean, that's normal. That's because you've inserted 5, 000, uh, 17,576 players. All of them have zero games. That's what you want. That's what you expect. Um, so all you're going to have is one row in there. Uh, and so you should see that count. Because every time we've inserted a player, we have incremented that count. So we've inserted 17,576 players. We should see the, <clears throat> the count of the players we have entered. I don't care how many games you have. They haven't, they haven't happened yet. Uh, and so run the code, run your code, check it. Are you, uh, do, does what you have make sense? Don't start the games trigger until that part is working. Also, the view should be working correctly. <clears throat> um, the view should still should be working and it should be giving you numbers and then look at RPS players and in the game, in the P game count field of the players, you should see zeros. Why? You haven't put anything else in there. Okay, now we start. The insert trigger of RPS games. <clears throat> this is also in the try block af after you do the insert. So it comes in the same place here that it did in the uh, insert trigger. Comes, so here's the insert into players, then the update. It comes in the same place. You have two players. They're both handled in exactly the same way. <clears throat> I'm only going to cover one of them. Why? Because it's almost seven o'clock, huh? Okay. I'm going to cover P1 ID. I know the player ID. What is it I have? Mine might be KQZ. So I know it's uh, P1 ID is KQZ. That's one, that's a parameter to the insert games. I have it right in front of me in that trigger, P1 ID. Grab the P game count from players. In other words, select P game count from players where P1, P ID equals P1 ID. Grab the game count into a variable. I need it. I'm going to call that variable I. Is that okay? You can call it anything you want to. If you want to call it T totally humswoggled, call it that. I'm going to call mine I because I don't like to type. Call it as you please. What's this? This is my game count. This tells me how many games that player is currently in. Where did he start? At zero. I have just added a game for this player. Now what is he? He's one. Update RPS players. Set. P game count equals P game count plus one. Where? The PID is equal to the parameter. <clears throat> In other words, go find that player. Save that game count. I need that game count in a variable. Then, after I have put that game count in a variable, I increment the game count in the database. Bet I got a question here. Don't have a question? Okay, so if I'm uh, if one of my players, if my player one is uh, CQX, uh, I got CQX. I grab CQX's game count, drop it into the variable I, 
Then I update RPS players, set game count uh, equals game count plus one, where PID equals that guy, that was CQX. So as I'm writing this, <clears throat> Over there in the in the players, my game count has been incremented, and I has the old game count in it. Are you with me there? I has the old game count. The new game count is has been updated in RPS players. Now there's other ways of looking at this. If you want to look at that differently, you look at it differently. Maybe you increment I. I don't know. There are other ways to work with this. I'm simply, I, I grab the current game count, store it, and then I increment RPS players. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, I has the old game count. Now, what has happened to this player? What was that player's name? CQX or whatever I said? CQX has moved from one bucket to another. CQX used to have five games. Now CQX has six games. CQX has moved from the five bucket to the six bucket or maybe from the three bucket to the four bucket or the zero bucket to the one bucket, I don't really care. He's moved or she's moved, whatever. Oh, our player has moved. If the player had four, now five and so on. Question is, okay, here's the $64,000 question. Do we have such a bucket? So they move from the four to the five. Do I have a five bucket? I either do or I don't. Okay. Check and see. Do I have a row in the stats table for that number of games? I.e., does this bucket exist? If exists, Select the star from statistics where the number of game, num games is I plus one. In other words, remember, I contains the old count, so I have to say I plus one. Now, you might be doing it different. You might have the new count in there, and that's your business. I'm working with the old count, so if my, my uh, player has gone from four to five, I still has four in it, and I'm looking to see, do I have a bucket five? It matters when you took that counter. If it exists, we're fine. We're fine. Simply increment the number of players in RPS statistics. So number of players in RPS statistics is number of players plus one where number of games is equal to I plus one. In other words, I was four, five. Okay, increment it. Else, I have to insert the row. Now, it's not there. So after I insert the row, how many players will be in it? There isn't any such row. So if I insert the row, how many will it have? One. Insert the row I plus one. So in other words, I, the, my, my player had, had four games and suddenly I have, he's gone into a different game. Now he or she has five games. Do I have a five in the statistics table? Check and see. If I do, cool, increment it. If I don't, insert the row, five, one. Why? Because he's the first row. Previous example of moving from four to five games, if I didn't have a five bucket, I do now, and it has one player. 
The next player that moves in will cause an increment, but not an insert. Dr. Smith? Yeah. What type of field is num games in RPS statistics? They are both integer. Is it a primary key? Uh, let's see. Uh, num games. <clears throat> I think I said that up here. What did I say was the primary key? Uh, PK is num games. Okay. Uh, and number of players is so if you look at the uh, <clears throat> it's possible to have duplicate number of players would be possible but not likely but at some point right here I had the same number of one players as I did zero players probably they crossed um, so there were times when they crossed but I but the the num games will always be zero one two three four five six seven or eight, nine, 10, 11. <clears throat> it's possible to have, um, you know, seven, eight, nine players with zero for seven and one player for eight. That's possible. Wouldn't hurt anything. Is there anything in the code that is um, automatically updating the table where if something, if a num game, if, if the integer didn't exist, then it would exist when something happens in the database? Uh, <clears throat> you're talking about the row in the statistics table. So for example, if um, I don't know what those players are, there are two players that have seven games. If one of those players engaged in another game, then that player would have eight games <clears throat> so that player would get promoted to the next bucket and that would mean that i would have to insert that bucket um, oh. into there and that's what else insert the row got so it i use so i was seven i'm going to insert the row i plus one eight and that row will have one player in it at this time the next player that gets promoted into the eighth bucket will simply increment that. Is that a stored procedure? What's that? No, it's a trigger. Got it. Part of the trigger. It's part of the insert trigger. So we're talking about the insert trigger for the uh, players and the insert trigger for the games. We're not full it where we're not in the insert trigger for the rounds at all. And these are the instead of insert triggers that we have already created, correct? Right, you'll add this uh, just after the insert statement where you actually insert the row. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the, really that big of a deal. Okay, okay to hear, wasn't that fun? Uh, oh. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're here. We have promoted a player. So the player moved from having four games to having five games. So I've got one more player now that had five games. How many players do I have four games? I've just lost a player from the four games bucket. Okay. Decrement for that player. Update RPS statistics. Set the number of players, number of players minus one, where the num games is equal to I. Remember, I is the the old count of that player. So there'll be two or three updates that have to happen. All of those updates go in a transaction. That's what I'm looking for here, guys, is the transaction. Okay, if you don't have the transaction, it's kind of, uh, we're not really in a, we're, we're not simulating our real world situation, wherever that real world is. Um, but the real world is the transaction. That's what we're going for. Uh, I say, wasn't that fun, 25, 30. Now do it all again for player two. But I mean, yeah, if it works for one of them, it works for the other. Now, if you execute these two guys together, 
And right, so let's go do it. My view, let's go. <clears throat> so this is the select everything from view. This is select everything from the statistics. And if I am having a very good day and I execute them, I should see the same uh, information coming from the view as I do from the table. Dr. Smith, why would that update statement not violate the primary key constraint? The update? Yes. So uh, you said set num players equal to num players minus one. It's, right, because the num games is the primary key, not the num players. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got it. The light dawns, huh? Actually, this is really just pretty much a counter program. Um, it's not a whole lot of SQL. Notice that we're never really going through and using our aggregate functions a whole lot because those are expensive. Now, if I were to remember when I, I set the show plan on, let me run this for you, uh, run the show plans. Uh, Oh, do I have it there? Where are you? Where are you? Show plan up here. I think right at the top here. Okay, somewhere in here I have set show plan on. Here we go. So I'm going to set my show plan on. execute and now I'm going to run this guy select everything I want to select from RPS view and I believe I have shown that as earlier that uh, when we got over here to our total subtree cost it was roughly a minute uh, roughly a second and a half um, <clears throat> We're going to leave him on, and I'm going to select everything now from the table, execute, and I get over here to, notice he's a lot shorter, I get over here to my total subtree cost, and now he is 0 .003, or three thousandths of a second, right? And so I'm on the order of almost a thousand times faster. Is everybody dazzled? That's the objective. That's where I wanted to get. Now, uh, it's not exactly true. Why not? Why is it not true? that after we made our changes to the table, it's really not, uh, let's see, I would, what, I would divide uh, 1.5, oh, 0.15 by 0 0.003, and I would get, uh, uh, Is it really that much faster? Fifty, right? Fifty, yeah. Is it really fifty times faster? I'm going to ask that question for the final. Is it really 50 times faster? Well, show plan says it is. What's the cost? 
Mary, are you there? Yes, I am. What's the cost? I really don't know. I don't there, know. There's a cost. We've been talking about it for the last hour. Hmm. Every time I insert, what I have to do the locking? Well, yeah, the locking and updating and and deleting. What's that? Are you talking about the uh, temporary tables inserted and deleted? Yeah, well, we're not deleting anything, but I have to maintain all of those counts. That doesn't come free. Right? So I have to talk about, if I'm going to talk about, you know, is it really 50 times faster? If it's 50 times faster, that'd be nothing to it. I mean, hey, that's a no-brainer. It's 50 times faster than the view. Okay. Oh, well, not quite. Maybe I need to do my decimal places, but I, I mean, I need to get all the decimal numbers, but there's a cost. Remember, I've got to, I've got to lock the, I've got to lock the rows. I've got to uh, increment. I've got to check and see if that row exists in the statistics table. I've got to do all that jazz. Is that so, not included in those costs though? No, it's not included in the cost that I'm, I, I have, done, I have uh, showing on the screen right now. Why not? Well, because right now, the only thing I'm considering is just simply this, select everything from RPS statistics. I'm not including the cost of inserting everything into RPS statistics. Oh, 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 oh. Right. So it's not free. It's not just 50 times faster. Now, it might well be 30 times faster or something because that uh, uh, view is expensive. Uh, so I'm going to get a saving on it from, the, from uh, bringing it out into a table. But it isn't every, everything's not free. The comparison that you're doing is uh, between... Uh, the select statement on 191 and the select statement on 192, right? Uh, I'm so, oh yes, yes. I'm comparing these two, these two guys right here. Just look um, at just select statements. Yeah. So, the, so um, the only thing it's comparing now, this one's fairly accurate. This is the true cost. So if I when when I when I execute this and I slide over here and I look at the cost of the subtree total mm -hmm. subtree cost of um, one point four three um, is is that that's pretty accurate. This cost right here it's it looks deceptively simple and I come over here and I find this tiny little subtree cost of point zero zero three. Um, I haven't taken into consideration the cost of maintaining that guy. So I would have to go in there and uh, calculate the, the difference in the cost of an insert to, of an insert of a player without it. Well, inserting a player is going to be a, a millisecond, you know, it's, it isn't going to be much at all. Inserting a game will be a little bit more, but remember that every time I insert a game, I incur that tiny little cost. Uh, so bounce up. Go ahead. Don't the inserts affect the view and the table? They do. Uh, well, the 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 fact that the trigger is maintaining the statistics table does not impact the view at all. The view is just the view. Uh, the view is just an SQL statement. Please. I hear somebody speaking, but I not. <laughs> Isn't the view based on the statistics table? 
It, it is. It's based on an SQL statement. Um, so it, the, the view, the cost of the view is, yeah. the, is the cost of running um, this, this statement right here, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, this guy. Uh, so whatever this costs to run yes. is the cost of the view. So every time I select from the view, I'm going to run this SQL. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> I'm going to run that uh, SQL statement. But every time I select from the RPS statistics table, now that one will run a lot faster. So the question then is, if I'm only selecting from RPS statistics view once in a blue moon, it's gonna be a big loser to try to keep that as a uh, table because I'm gonna have the cost of the table. Well, the cost of the table isn't much. I'm gonna have the cost of the extra field in the RPS players table. Remember that's 17,000 players. So that's 17,000 integers I have on my disk. Uh, I have to update them all the time. If I delete, by the way, if I ask you to delete, I bet you could figure out how to do it. It's just the same thing we're doing now, only backwards. Um, questions? So if the view, like, okay, so is the view working on, the, wait a minute, this is a whole new table. So how does that have to do with the um, extra field in uh, RPS players or RPS game? Uh, the extra field in RPS players is used to make updating the table easier the table does not use it and there would be oh, other ways that you could do this task using that extra field um, and summing it for example so if you were to select it group by it and and count it or stuff like that <coughs> you could arrive at this um, a different way there's other ways to do this. This is the way I did it. <laughs> Dr. Smith, can you talk a little bit about the locking? Well, the locking, essentially, you're going to lock. <coughs> oh, I have a cough tonight. Um, Excuse me a minute. Okay. Um, transaction boundaries. Begin transaction, end transaction. Um, no, uh, it's over here. Okay. Um, uh, for let's go to insert into RPS players. So I have my begin transaction. By the way, you can just say begin tran. I personally prefer transaction um, and roll back transaction, commit transaction, but whatever. Um, I only have one row to lock in RPS statistics. <clears throat> what row is that? The zero row. So I just lock it. And it stays locked, so I take I take a um, what is it? Uh, uh, select. Let's see. How did that go? Uh, select that. <clears throat> so the reason. With so the reason you're locking row zero is because you're getting ready to. I'm getting ready to update it. <laughs> okay. And that can be that can be a UPD lock. Um, I believe I gave you. Let me see here. Open. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, it wasn't that one. I remember you gave us at least two different kinds of blocking. Right, I gave you a, let's see, here it is. Um, <clears throat> I sent you this one. So this one is the uh, um, invoice line items. <clears throat> so basically I'm going to, um, create, I, I create an index here just because I need one. Now, here's where I create the trigger for inserting into invoice line items. Instead of insert, <clears throat> I, um, I don't let you do multiple inserts because they're a pain in my neck. Um, so I begin the transaction here. Uh, so I begin transaction and I have to give it a name in SQL Server and others you don't. So I start my try block. I select invoice total from invoices with uh, <clears throat> uh, UPD lock, and then I give the index. The index will be the same as the name of the primary key. So I know the name of the primary key in the RPS statistics table. So I select the, um, oh, what is it, the, the, the field I'm gonna update from uh, RPS statistics with U UPD lock index, and this is the name of the primary key, and then where the <clears throat> um, where the num games is equal to zero. So num games is the name of your index. <clears throat> so it would look kind of like, the, uh, it would look like uh, select num games from RPS statistics with UPD lock index num games PK or whatever, whatever you named the, the uh, this is the constraint that creates your PK where num games is equal to zero. <clears throat> Just lock that one, that one row. And then when you, when you complete, so we lock that one row and then you either roll back or you commit. Probably going to commit. This one, <clears throat> So you don't have to unlock? Uh, unlock is either roll back or commit. Okay. Unlock says, uh, end it when the, tr it's, it's locked only for the duration of the transaction. Okay. okay. You might have to do a little Google here to understand this, but locking, once you lock it, it stays locked until something happens to unlock it, which is commit, which is why you want to get committed as fast as you can. So you don't want to be sitting in a transaction uh, just <clears throat> lollygagging around. You never want a transaction <clears throat> to hang, right? So I have a way of saying, how long am I willing to wait? So I might want to lock one row and then lock another row. Well, what happens if I can't get the lock on the other row? How long am I willing to wait here? Usually that's about 50 milliseconds. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to talk about this some more. We'll be on this, we'll be on this guy for a long time, or well, until the end of class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's about seven thirty, and I'm hungry. I don't know about you guys. It's turkey time. <laughs> turkey time. My mother-in-law was, or we were eating with my mother-in-law and she looked at me and said, turkey. Well, she has Alzheimer's, but. <clears throat> um. Okay, let's see, I see. Jen, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. 
Wayne, I haven't heard anything out of you. I suspect you're on a cell phone. Well, I'll post the, uh, you can send me a text. Uh, let's see if I got any texts. I got any chats. What do I got? Chat. Two people chatting. Okay. <clears throat> um, Mr. Okechi, I heard from you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Well, we're about to wrap up here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all and to all a good night. And I will <clears throat> uh, get this uh, um, session posted for your uh, listening pleasure as you choose to later. And I am now... Actually, before you end, before how do we I turn end. in? Um, how do we turn in the application? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. Will it? Uh, are, will it let you turn in a zip file? Um, maybe yeah, you can, it depends you on can what you set it to. File. I know it does. I, I'm not sure whether I set that assignment to uh, allow zip files or not. <clears throat> I think I, I will. I'm going to change it to allow. Uh, uh, zip files and um, so a zip file would be since I'm not going to have that many of them you know if I've if I have 50 programs to grade unzipping them is a pain in the neck but I'm not going to have that many here so we'll we'll do zip files I'll go uh, uh, make sure I've changed everything to allow you to turn in zip files Okay, so you just zip it. Uh, I read code very well. So you would have a, uh, <clears throat> what you would have is a file, uh, a program, uh, a batch file. And in your batch file would um, be the, the code. So it would look something like this. Uh, okay. And so in my code, <clears throat> if I were turning it in, my, my code would look something like this. Uh, here I generate the, the, the players, and that you can use my code here. Generate the players, and then I, I would go ahead and create the view <clears throat> right here. That, that's fine. Uh, because I gave you that code and then select everything from RPS view <clears throat> and really the work here is done over in your triggers. So go ahead and <clears throat> include your triggers where you create or, or alter your triggers. And that can be in a separate file or it could be in this file if you want. Uh my question was uh, in regard to um, uh, um, rock, paper, scissors. Right. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and zip that into one file. Um, the, so I um, recently turned in um, the, uh, the triggers. When I uh, turned in the triggers um, through, uh, through Canvas, I did not, I, the only other assignment that I saw was... Uh, this new assignment i did not uh, see anything for the uh for the application uh have i not put the assignment out there for rock paper scissors i, I don't know mm, let me see what i've got i'm still working on it but um well just, uh, several people are actually uh see what's going on Uh, part one is the, okay, I think that was part two. Part two, I did the triggers. There's the triggers. Yeah. Uh, let me edit this. <clears throat> Uploads restrict, I'm going to take that restrict upload types off. That would allow you to uh, submit zip files. 
There's the triggers and modules. RPS. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. That's statistics. That's what I was Right. Thinking. I think I, uh, uh, part two. <clears throat> modules. So I'm basically looking for what's in between that. Right. So RPS project, we have linked servers, part two. Uh, insert player form. Okay. Uh, at some point, we're going to submit the whole project. I need to get that out there, and I, it will probably be an assignment that says, <clears throat> okay, it all goes here. And, and instead of worrying about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So this one will kind of include everything. The visual basic portion, um, from the experience that I've had uh, with it, um, there's an executable file um, that uh, that's used to run the program. Right. So are uh, we supposed to turn in uh, an SQL file and an executable file? Yes, let's turn in the uh, SQL file. I'll, let me, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> uh, let's see, give me until next week. Hey, that's good enough for me because I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, let me, uh, I may need more let time me, than Let me get a, uh, exactly what I want for the Visual Basic part. Okay, great. Some people are turning in Visual Basic. Some people are turning in um, uh, uh, C Sharp. And so I'm going to yeah. have some uh, coding to read, but that's okay. I read code. Okay. Okay. So I'm about to end here. Happy Thanksgiving, Dr. Smith. And to you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. And good night. Good night. Bye, good night. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.